Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can make these custom adventure servers. As with any server, you start in the center of the world. But I've made it, so this is where <laughs> the center of the world is. You have to either look at this stuff or go down into that hallway. And I've done it this way because I found that when you make custom servers, if you want people to go on an adventure, you have to really limit their options in the very beginning so that it's quite linear. Otherwise, they think it's just another Valheim server, they join and then they leave. Things. First, this is sort of I'm gonna give you sort of a tour of an example of one of these servers. I've made this server to start as a level one character. You just join it, basically. And you can also join this server if you want. This is the IP. My password is password. Very easy. Just a quick disclaimer. A lot of the buildings that you see in this server were built by other people. They uploaded them onto this Valhemian's website. So let's keep forward and open into the armory. The server has been used a bit, as you can see. And these armories serve to give people sort of an equal starting point. So the idea is to test the magic out and give you a lot of practice with magic. So you kind of come over here and you take one of each of these weapons. And then I usually make sure that the dagger is the beginning and then I like it if it goes dagger, crom, fireball, and then the rest doesn't matter as much. Then we take a set of the Fenris gear. And then over here in this chest at the end of the hallway is some food. And I purposefully made it so it only gives you magic food. And this is again because the server is all about giving you sort of end game magic experience. We'll start with the first trial, which is a Colosseum. Remember that someone's already been playing on the server, so it's likely already messed with. You should probably shut the door behind you. Yeah. Hey, they listened. How smart. Here we are. This is the Goblin Coliseum. And it looks like uh, they have not killed all the goblins, interestingly. So people tend to figure out how to... Oh, shit. <laughs> Move forward. Whoa, that's a lot of goblins. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm in trouble now. Oh, my gosh. That's a two-star. Oh, my God. I gotta run, oh my god, I'm glad I have the feminist gear. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see, I see why the, it looks like this person just jumped out here. <laughs> That's really funny. So yeah, you're supposed to go in there with, you know, all this magic, and then... The goblins, if you use AoE on them, and stay away from them, you can kill them before they come and really mess with you, right? So right now I have an issue because I'm running around and I don't have the shield up and you're gonna die. So if you want to do this beginning part, you, you really can't like try and wait around and kill the goblins. Uh, you need to like make sure that you find it like the safe places basically, like right here. And then keep your shield up because otherwise you're definitely gonna die. And then you can get the high ground here and then there's fewer goblins up here. So we can just come over here and kind of take care of these goblins real quick, right? Goblin combat, just so you guys have a sense of kind of how you're supposed to do this. Because if you go in with the traditional sense of, you know, running around with your melee gear, you're, you're just going to get ganked because there's too many goblins. But if you keep your shield up and run around with the Fenris gear, uh, because of the fire resistance and your movement speed, then you can basically, like, kite the goblins around. And then you can separate them up into these groups, and then just kind of wreck them, right? And what you'll notice is that as you run out of magic, you can switch to damaging them with stamina, right? And then as you do that... Oh, glad I had the shield. See, the shield saved me. As you switch, then you can switch back to the magic. So the magic system is really fun in combat, to be honest, because it's created this sort of back and forth that uh, I just really, really enjoy. Come back here! Got him. Nice. 
Nice. Yeah, here we go. It looks like we've mostly cleared up. So the idea is that you realize uh, you can destroy this... Uh... Oh, I'm encumbered. You can destroy these wooden beams here, just like that. And then you can go down into it. Let's keep going. Go down the hole here. And then we find ourselves in a tunnel. And we looted this lantern, which is quite cool. Let's make that even more cosmetic here. That wasn't planned, but it works out well. And then you go up here and outside. And from here on, you have to be careful, because this is sort of the path of the wolves. So, you gotta be careful, because you see all those feminists. <laughs> what happens? I designed these places thinking the most fun way is to fight everything, but it's actually really cool seeing how players will just run past, and then some of them fight stuff, but it causes the monsters to, like, accumulate in different areas, right? <laughs> we can't get through the gate. Okay, that's good to know. So, we're just gonna go over here. Now we're actually in the checkpoint. So this is the safe spot. <laughs> I don't know how safe this is, but let's go over here. All right. And these checkpoints occur throughout the server. It's designed to be a place where you can rest, right? You can save a checkpoint just like this. And that way when you die, instead of starting in the beginning of the server, you'll start here, right? And the advantage of this is that even if I restart the server, it still remembers where your character was. So even though all the previous trials are restarted and all the monsters are back, your character will still be where you left it. So you can keep going with the further trials in the game without having to restart from the very beginning. So that's the idea with like the beds and these checkpoints. It gives you a place to kind of refresh. Um, but you're not really super safe here because people end up totally destroying these places. Like, after like a day or two I get here and someone's let a troll in and the trolls destroy half the base. Especially one of those big guys. Like, like what's up with this? He, he just took care of all of the wolves? They ran away? Like, what happened? There were so many and now there's no gates? What's up? But he's actually from the arena, which is in the next trial. So let's go over there. And it looks like they've done a very good job of escaping. And let's go into the next area. So this is the arena. Again, you're supposed to kill all these gray dwarfs. That's the idea. And then you go over here. And <laughs> into level four. But you'll probably have a bunch of metal in your inventory. So you got to do that. There's 11 trials in total. And this area is more of a puzzle. It's a, like a logical kind of puzzle thing. So I'm not going to tell you too much about this area. I'll just go through the next one. Welcome to the next trial. And just a full disclaimer here. I used a lot of tools and resources. So I used other people's stuff that they'd uploaded in some cases. Like all the cool portals you see are made by someone who posted all of that to Valhemians. So this area is in the Ashlands, and essentially, I spawned a bunch of goblin camps. And you see that tower off in the distance? The idea is that you travel to that tower, and there's a portal up in the top of it. But I put so many goblins there that you can't really just run there unless you know what to do. You sort of have to fight them. Yeah, so I tried running just because I was being impatient, and then I remembered why you can't do that. You have to actually, like, fight them a bit at a time. Otherwise, uh, this happens. And I'll give you one tip for this area, because it's kind of hardcore if you don't know what to do. Uh, the tower is locked by this ward here, so you have to destroy it. And if you want to, there is a stealth way to do it. Instead of fighting all the goblins, you can just sort of destroy the tower from far away with magic. And you have to actually hit the ward, and then once you destroy it, then you can run up to the tower, open the door, and get inside before the goblins club you. Now that we're safely inside this really cool tower base, we can go up to the top and go to the next portal. 
Just a reminder, most of the builds you see like this are from Valhemians. They're builds that people have uploaded. A lot of them are by Mutant Art Cat. Uh, one of my favorite uploaders. Get to the top of the tower and you'll find the portal to trial number five. And if you go in, you'll find that it's a whole different kind of trial. I tried to spice things up and alternate between puzzles and combat, so it's not just relentless goblin fighting, right? So this is basically a river of death. Uh, I put the motor boss trophy here, just in case you don't have it, just because this part isn't really possible unless you have Tailwind. Now, the idea here is to get as far as possible. There's actually uh, an end point, and if you just make it there, then you can just continue along the rest of the trials. But if you crash this boat, uh, you, then you gotta walk. And there's a lot of enemies, and it's really intense. And to be honest, I've never actually even made it all the way through this river myself. So don't fret too much. <laughs> then uh, you might be able to make it through. But don't fret if you don't. That's why there's like 20 boats. Well, as you can see, uh, this is why you need a little shield. My boat is gone, and I am Serpent Chow. But it looks like- oh, oh, I just barely survived, holy shit. Once you get to the end of that fairly long river, you'll find the next challenge. Well, the portal to the next challenge. And here we have trial number six, the Path of Pain. This is basically a long path filled with a bunch of goblins and other monsters, and you need to survive going down the path. You don't have to kill everything, but you sort of have to. If you go out this window, you can see the beginning of the path, and the goblin guards. And this room has kind of a chance to repair your gear if you need to. And then you can go upstairs here, get a better view, and go up here into the attic. And this is where there's more checkpoints and safe spots. You should always use these when you get a chance because it makes the server experience more enjoyable. And again, a special thanks to Mutant Art Cat and all the other uploaders to Valhemians because this house and many of these other structures are on the website. I didn't make them, I just used them and customized them a little bit and filled them with some stuff. Let's go downstairs out the front and get started on the Path of Pain. And my, my biggest encouragement here is don't rush down it because you basically end up aggroing crap loads of enemies, running away from them, aggroing more, and then just dying and having to go get your body or something because all the other players took all the gear. So take your time, kill stuff slowly, and just progress forward. That's what you're meant to do, honestly, and that's what makes it most fun. As you can see, there's groups of goblins, and as long as you stay back, you can kill most of the goblins so that by the time they get to you, they barely have any health and you can just sort of, you know, shred them up with your knife, that kind of thing. The Path of Pain keeps going for a while and there's a few sort of uh, points of interest, like that is the Church of the Dead and it's filled with Draugr and a whole bunch of other stuff. And it's kind of cool to add these other monsters because if you want to, you can make the Fuelings fight the Draugr and vice versa. And halfway through the Path of Pain, you can find a checkpoint, which as long as you shut the gates behind you and get out of sight of all of these goblins is perfectly, totally safe, right? Be careful, and remember, keep your shield up. Uh, now the next part is really not meant to be ran through because there's too many enemies and you're supposed to be killing all of them, so uh, bear with me. But this here, this is the goblin army and you keep going and killing stuff, and eventually you'll get to a, a front between the goblins and the dverger. And, and as you can see, there is a front line. And they're actively fighting. It's actually really cool how active it is, but on one side you have a bunch of dverger and mages, and then over here we have goblins. And so you're supposed to come in and then fight the goblin army, which is like up over there on that hill and then come over here, and then there's all these Dverger. The problem is, uh, the Dverger are already aggressive. So they're not your friends, they're gonna try and kill you. They're trying to kill the goblins, but as far as they're concerned, you're just another goblin. 
Now, if you make it through that initial bridge defense, then you get into the next checkpoint. And this is your chance to actually fight the hardest monsters in the game, Diverger. Uh, I actually had to make this part easier because I had way too many two-star Diverger. And two-star Diverger are insane, even, even with the best gear in the game. If you're fighting like a couple two-star Diverger, they, they just kill you. Like, especially the mages, they, they, they're so powerful. So I made it uh, a bit easier, but it's still quite challenging. So you need to make it to this checkpoint. And once you're at this checkpoint, then you can venture off into the Diverger city, which is right outside the checkpoint over there. Now, if you make it to the end of the Diverger city, then you'll find that there is another checkpoint, but you actually can't get into it because you have to destroy the ward that is in this final tower here. Then you'll have to deal with a for the troll forest, which is full of these guys, and uh, they hit really hard. After you get through the Forest of Trolls, then you'll find the last two trials. This trial is much more like playing Valheim, more traditionally. Basically, I spawned some, spawned some mines over here. So for trial number 10, you explore the mines to find the Queen's location. And that'll put a map marker. It's over here, spoiler alert, somewhere over there. And then, for trial 11, you go sail to the queen. But this time, the queen's already spawned and she has some friends. You'll find that she's actually already spawned. Looking very Diablo-esque. And she has her own little army and you have to fight her out here instead of inside in her little place. So you'll s need to set up a whole voyage and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this tour, and if you want to, you can join the server and try it yourself. And if you're interested in doing this yourself, then I have two videos for you. One is just how to buy and set up the dedicated server, the basics of it. But that's just a regular Valheim server. That's not something like this. To make something like this, you need to actually build it. So, here's a video all about that. If you liked this kind of server that you saw in the video and you want to make these kind of things and make your own challenging experiences that you can try out, then look at my video that explains the tools that you need to copy and paste using mods like Plan Build and Infinity Hammer. So if you're interested in more content, then consider supporting me or commenting below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.